is still worthy to be praised. Oh, it's always worthy, yes. Regardless of how I feel, I didn't feel good today. I still don't feel too good, but God is good. <laughs> Sister Inez said, Pastor, you look tired. Look at the bags under your eyes. So, honey, that ain't all. Oh, my feet are swollen. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And I don't care how I look. I told my husband, he was saying, honey, you got it? Yeah, I got it. I got a word from the Lord. And I'm going to do what the Lord said do, regardless, irregardless of how I feel today. Glory to God. So my title today is God Desires Truth in the Inward Park. Look at all the water. I didn't know that. God Desires Truth in the Inward Park. And I'm going to be coming from Psalms 51 and 6. 51 and 6. This is David talking. And he says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. After all, David knew what he was talking about. Because the Bible tells us that God himself, not that man wrote, not nothing man wrote, or that man said, but God himself said that David was a man after his own heart. Okay. Amen. Glory to God. Someone who delighted in doing the will of God. He delighted in the laws of the Lord. And he meditated on them day and night. David said, the Lord has set me apart. Yes. Set apart him that is godly for himself. Let me say that again. The Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. He's talking about us, y'all. He's talking about the saints. He has set us apart for himself. And he will hear you when you call. David knew God had, David knew God. David trusted God. David pleased God. David's desire was what God's desire is for us today. And that's the truth of God living and dwelling in you richly. In our inward parts. In our total being. In our hearts. And in our souls. David really loved God. Because if you read the book of Psalms. It just seems like. It's a love letter. Written to God. From David. David knew what God wanted. Because he spent time with God. And when you spend time with somebody. I don't care if it's a child. It could be a pet. A friend or a spouse. You begin to know their likes and their dislikes. Their wants and what they don't want. All because you took the time to spend some time. Glory to God. How many know just because you're at a place doesn't mean you're there? That's right. You're there physically. Your body is there. But your mind could be somewhere else. Drifting somewhere else. You could be daydreaming. Yeah. I could be up here preaching the word. And you haven't heard a word I said. That's, right. Amen. That's when you're hearing, but you're not listening. Not paying attention. You could have both parents in a home. Dad playing PlayStation. Mom on the computer. And the child on the phone on Facebook. Amen. You're together, but you're not together. A lot of people come to church because that's what they did when they were little. Their parents took them to church. They wasn't living for God, but they went to church. So now that you're older and you have kids, you bring your kids to church. Glory to God. Because that's what your parents did for you. And that's what you were taught. Listening. Learning. And the Bible says, forever learning, but never able to come into the knowledge of of the truth. Yes, yes, Pastor. The Bible says, your men, and I'm adding the women because he's talking to us too. That's right. But he says, your men and women of corrupt minds 
reprobate concerning the faith, meaning rejected, unacceptable, unworthy of the faith of God. And that's sad. You go to church the majority of your life and never coming into the knowledge of God's truth about yourself. Some people are too smart for their own good. You can't even tell them anything. They know everything. That's Frederick sometimes. Ma, I know. I ain't even finished. He know. You don't even know what I was going to say, Frederick. But he know everything. Some people know everything. They sin. They don't repent. They try. They don't even try to do right. But they say. They say because they're going to church. So they say. They say because they sing in the choir. Well, there's a lot of kids that go to school too. But they ain't going to graduate when it's time for graduation. You hear me? Not everybody that go to school graduate on the day of graduation. Some have to go to summer school. Not everyone that goes to church is going to heaven. It's sad, but it's true. Just don't let that be you. Don't let your coming to church be in vain. Don't let your living and your praying be in vain. Do y'all hear me? Don't let it be in vain. Truths can be staring them right in the face. As plain as the nose on their face. But that's too plain for some folks. For some people. That can't be the truth. Jesus died for the whole world. He's not going to send me to hell for that. If they only took a minute and think about what they just said. Yes, Jesus. If Jesus died for the sins of the world, that means a debt was paid for you. All right. Not for you to keep doing what you're doing. He did it so you no longer had to sin. Because if Jesus wanted the world to go back to sin after he had just gave his life to free you of your sins, then there will be no need for him to come and die. That would be ridiculous. To think that Jesus came and died for you to continue in what you're doing. My God. You make a change so that things don't stay the same. That's why he came and died. Well, I don't see nothing wrong with this. I don't see nothing wrong with what I'm doing. Why do I have to stop doing this? I'm going to do my own research. I'm going to search different religious, religions. And before you know it, you'll be saying there's different ways to God. That Jesus is not the only way. Now there's a mother God. I hear there's a mother God yet. Well, my Bible don't tell me that. I'm my own God. I hear some of them say, I'm my own God. I can make babies. We're our own God. Well, what about those who can't make babies? Are they not a God because they can't have kids? You ain't no God. A God of mess. That's what you is. A God of mess. But we are not our own gods. You hear me? The Bible said we are made in the image and the likeness of God. But he didn't say we was no God. The devil will have you so wrapped up and confused all because you don't want to change your ways. Amen. Psalms 119 and 30 says, The entering in of thy word, the opening up, the unfolding of thy word, give light and understanding to the simple. Meaning the childlike. The inexperienced. The simple folk. Fools and foolish people. The Bible said his word. God said his word will come and confound the wise. It's foolishness unto them. Yeah. But it's the power of salvation unto us. And he said this word. He'll take this word and he'll confound the wise. Those who think they're smart and geniuses. They'll read this word and won't be able to figure nothing out. Because you know why? 
It's not carnal. That's right. You can't figure God out with your brain. It's a spiritual thing. He said, them that worship me, you must worship me in spirit and in truth. Don't forget about that. Spirit and in truth. A lot of people come to church. They say they saved. They do this to do that. One lady said she was saved and sitting up there cussing. Mother, mother, don't do that. Don't do that. Say, I don't understand, folks. The Bible said that that uh, 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 salt, and, and how it go, honey? Sweet water and salty water ain't right. supposed to come out your mouth. That's right. That's right. Bitter water, yes, honey. Yes. Yes. Out the same fountain. Mm -hmm. That means we got to be talking godly, holy. We can't be talking like the world and then say we saved, doing what the world do, saying what the world do. We supposed to be peculiar. That's right. There supposed to be a difference. They're supposed to be able to tell you from a sinner. Have a line of people up here like they do when you, when you get caught in jail. What they call that? A line up. Line a bunch of us up here and tell somebody, pick out the Christian. Will they be able to choose you? Will they be able to choose you? We're supposed to be peculiar, y'all. We ain't supposed to look nothing like the world. That's right, that's right. He said, come out from amongst yes, them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. God, I thank you. Jesus, be separate. Ooh, God, thank you, Don't be mingling. Don't be dingling. Yes, yes. Touch not, he said. Yes, yes. Touch not. Mm. Glory to God. We that are preaching and teaching the word of God. We have to rightly divide the word of God. Okay. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thy self approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly divide the word of truth. You hear that? Not just dividing this word the way we want it to be divided, but we got divided the way God means. We got to ask for his revelation, his knowledge, his understanding, his wisdom of his word. Because we can't be out there preaching what we think is right. And preaching what the people want to hear. But we got to preach and do it God's way. And that's the way they did it in the days of old in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. And that's the way we're going to do it here at Soul Salvation. We're going to do it God's way. Glory to God. We cannot speak the truth because this, we cannot not speak the truth because this person might leave the church or that person, person might be offended because they think you're preaching on them. And that used to be my biggest fear. God will give me something, the, the word, let me, let me mark this. God will give me the word. I'm right, Lord, I can feel the anointing. I can just see the way I'm going to preach it up here. Yes, yes. Then sometimes I get to the back back there just going over it and make sure I didn't leave a word out or I misspelled the word. And then I said, Lord, have mercy. These people going to think I'm preaching about them. <laughs> I get a little nervous. But he said, don't worry about that. He said, don't worry about them thinking that you're talking about them. Because it's really me talking to them. Honey, this is God. This is not none of my doing. This is none of my doing. As a matter of fact, I warned somebody on Thursday. I said, Lord, in mercy, this is my title. But I'm not talking about nobody. But the Lord know what we have need of, don't he? Glory to God. Praise you, Jesus. All we have to do is preach the word in love. Honey, love makes a difference. Yes, yes. It really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Glory to and if we do our part, don't worry about the rest. Mm -hmm. Because people will know if you're in the flesh, That's right. Jesus, talking, or if it's God talking. Yes, yes, yes. So we don't got to worry about it. Jesus, thank you. God desires for you to know truth. Glory be to God. Believe in the truth. Trust in the truth. That's
If we be honest with ourselves, we know deep down inside when we're not doing right. When we're not doing the God, uh, uh, the will of God. That's why we sneaking, hiding, and lying. If you got to do all that, then you know you're doing wrong. John 8 and 32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And verse 36 says, If the Son makes you free, or sets you free, then you are free indeed. You hear that? You're free indeed. Jesus said, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now how foolish does that look? Sometimes I see them rescue animals. You done got them out the, the net or the mess and stuff, and you let them go, he go right back in there. Sure enough. That's probably because he's lost his sense of direction for fighting so much trying to get out. Mm -hmm. But we know better when the Lord has delivered us from sin, from death. Some of us even from death. And he said, be not entangled again. Get on the street called straight. Right. Do you hear me? Yeah. Get on the street called straight and stay on. Yeah. Don't deter to the left nor to the right. But stay on that straight and narrow. Some people don't even want the truth. Because it makes you uncomfortable. Because now you're talking about me. There's nothing wrong with the way I'm living. There's nothing wrong with him spending the night. Oh, we've been together so long. We might as well be married. It's called common law. Common law. That's the world's law. That's, right. That's not God's law. God's law said if you're living together, get married. That's right. That's We're supposed to be married. Hallelujah. We're supposed to do the right thing. And some people say they're saved and they're still doing it. God understands. We have kids. God don't understand sin. God's mercy to your sin. He's merciful. He gives you grace. He gives you time to repent. Time to do the right thing. But God... Don't understand sin. Not when he's made a way of escape for you from skin, sin. For them that know to do right and do it is not, the Bible says. It is sin. Do you hear me? We're going to be held accountable for the things that we know to do and we don't do. It is sin. God desires truth in the inward part. And until we get this truth down on the inside, and live it when we are living a lie. If we don't, then we're living a lie. Having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. That's people saying they're saved, but you won't allow God's power to do what it wants to do in you. You're rejecting him. You're refusing him. Not allowing him to turn, turn the power of God, the truth, turning the power down. This devil trying to trip me up, but I'm going to put this word out. That's right. You're turning down the power of God, the truth of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power. And all that is, is a trick of the enemy. Do y'all hear me? It's a trick of the enemy. He wants you to think you're all right in what you're doing. It's a trick of the enemy. John 8 and 44 says, Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of himself, for he is a liar and the father of it. You hear me? There's no truth in him. Don't believe nothing he's saying. Ain't worth listening to. When you see him coming, whether it be in a person of a form, you know there ain't nothing but a big liar. Just turn the other way. Walk away. Let him call you. Hey, no, yeah, I gotta go. I'm busy. I'm busy. Nobody wanna hear that mess. You get tired of that. Get tired of the enemy. And if they keep on, then just turn around and rebuke the devil. 
out of them because that's what they need anyway. Cast the devil out of them. Glory to God. Because it's hard to see a lie when it's covered in truth. But you better know and you better believe, honey, that there's a lie down there somewhere. I don't care how the devil try to fix things up. You know how we say it's too good to be true? Yes, Master. Better read the fine print. You better ask them to explain it to them. And if you have any questions, you better ask them. Because, honey, they'll get you. They will get you. It's hard to see a lie when it's covered in truth. But it's in there. Glory to God. But if you desire the truth, real truth, truth that convicts men and women of their sins, their wrongdoings, truth that says fornication is a sin. Truth that says homosexuality is a sin. Truth that says stealing is a sin. I don't care what kind of good excuse you think you have. I did it for my kids. I did it to feed my kids. Well, I know they have the Salvation Army. I know there's a soup kitchen. I know there's churches. And all you got to do is ask. That's right, Pastor. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And I see people standing on the corner with a sign. So there ain't no need to steal. Maybe you're too proud to ask. But you ain't too proud to steal. To risk getting caught and go to jail with your face plastered all over the newspaper and on TV. But you're too proud to ask for help. You have not because you act and stop. Just because you think you have a good reason for sinning still doesn't make it right. Amen. Talk about she wasn't there for me. Well, if she wasn't there for you, you couldn't have been there for her. Because you're out there cheating. If she's not there for you and you're not there for her, that doesn't give you the right to go and cheat. She didn't cheat when you wasn't there for her. One wrong don't make a right. And two wrongs definitely don't make it right. We got to strive to do the right thing. Live the truth. Live righteous. We have to believe. Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith, it's all about faith. We can't even make it to heaven without faith. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Okay. But it's also the evidence of things that are not seen That's yet. Right. Right. We got to have faith. Oh, to Hebrews 11.6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. You see that? God ain't even pleased with you when you walk around here. Oh, God can't do this. He ain't did it. He ain't even pleased with you because you ain't got no faith. You're talking doubt. Glory to God. Must believe first that he is. He is what? He is God. He is who he said he is. Yes. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Yes. Diligently seek him. Yes. You know how sometimes we're looking for something, we'll look over here, we'll look over there, we don't find it, oh, forget it, I'll wear something else. But when you really want something, when you really love something, could be a diamond earring, could be the keys to your car, how about that? Honey, we, we'll tear the house up, trying to look for that cell phone, trying to look for them car keys. And that's how God want us to look for him, to seek him. He said, if you seek me with your whole heart, then you'll find me. If you're not, he said the door will be open unto you. Glory to God. Diligently means to do it with much effort. Eagerly. Earnestly. With great persistence. Ain't that right, Chris? Eagerly. Be persistent. We always want to feel loved. And want, wanted by someone. Well, don't you think God wants the same thing? Yes, he does. God has feelings too. Mm -hmm. 
Let's do. And we should love and respect God for all that he has already done for us. Not that which he ain't answered yet, but if we look back over our life and think things over, glory to God, we have a lot to be thankful for. Do you hear me? A lot to be thankful for. The Bible says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and with all your soul. God created us to praise him, to give love back to him, because he loves us unconditionally. But we'll love God with condition. If God don't do this, then we mad. Oh, I ain't going to serve him. I ain't going to pay my tithes today. God didn't do this. Why did he do this? Why didn't God answer me? Tell it, tell it, tell it. Well, have you been walking out right before the Lord? Yes. Have you been seeking the Lord? Yes. Have you been praying and fasting? Yes. 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 We want God to do things when we want to. But what about when God wants you to do things and we don't do it? Huh? We don't think about that. We think about when we're in trouble. And guess what? He'll still have mercy on you. Yes, he will. He said, in the time of trouble, I will be with you. I will deliver you. Glory to God. First John 1 and 1 says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, which we have looked upon with our own eyes and have hand handled and have touched it with our own hands. For life was manifested and we have seen it and bared witness to it and have showed unto you eternal life which was manifested by the Father. Now right there he's talking about the disciples. They've seen Jesus. they touched Jesus. Okay, but when I look at that scripture, I thought about Shay and Dante yesterday, her first baby. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Her and her husband witnessing the miracle, working power of God. Mm -hmm. Handling it, touching it, holding it. Jesus, Glory to God. It boggles my mind every time. Mm -hmm. How God can take a sperm and an egg. Mm -hmm. And in nine months, look at the baby. Mm -hmm. Look at the babies, y'all. God is an awesome God. He's an awesome God. He's a miracle working God. I don't know why he didn't give my husband one, but that's all right. I'm still going to praise God. I'm still going to praise him. Ain't going to let the baby him to me. God knows it used to years, back years ago. Oh, the mercy, I used to cry, cry, Lord, why? I had to line up with the will of God. Maybe it wasn't his will. For me to have kids. Now I got a church full of kids. All y'all my babies. All of y'all my babies. Young and old. But you will see people see that miracle. And turn right around and say. There ain't no God. There is no God. Can you believe that? If you've watched the baby show. I seen a baby show one time. How the baby. When it comes together. The heart is like this. The heart is so fast. It don't even make a heartbeat sound. It's just fast, fast rhythm. Yeah, I'm talking about you. You looking. But when as the baby grow, that starts to slow down. I tell you, that show like to blow my mind. Yeah, it made me cry because I wanted a baby. But the awesomeness of God just because he didn't do it for me, that don't make me believe that there's no God. That's right, that's right, Pastor. He's done other stuff for me. There's other things that I can be thankful for. Jesus. Other things that I can believe that, yes, there is a God. Jesus, there is a God. That's right. Just it's denied, Glory to God. Jesus, Jesus. There is a God. Jesus, and for those who think there ain't no God, the Bible calls you a fool. Thou fool, he says. Psalms 14 and 1 says, The fool have said in his heart, There is no God. My God. 
Man is always trying to explain things with logic. Yes. But sometimes things are so unexplainable. Yes. Things are sometimes spiritual. Matter of fact, just about everything is spiritual. Look at the seasons. When it's time for winter, here come winter. When it's time for spring, here comes spring. Here comes summer. Fall. I knew I forgot one. Thank you. I heard somebody say it. You did. God bless you. I thought it came over here. But listen how even the seasons obey God. They obey God. They're not doing that on their own. You got some flowers that come back every year. Called perennials. I know my stuff. <laughs> then you got some flowers that you got to buy every year. They day out, die off. They're called annuals. <laughs> annuals. Y'all like that? Annuals. Annuals and perennials. But look at God. We got to look around and you can see God in everything. He said, let them that have breath praise ye the Lord. And you can see the trees praising them when the things are blowing like this. The flowers are praising them when they're budding and they're even some clothes. The birds are praising them when they tweet. Everything. Praise Lord. God created everything. Everything. I know my husband preached on Nicodemus last week. But I want to talk about it a little bit today. Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews, the Bible said. He figured he'll wait till nighttime come to go see Jesus. Because see, the rulers and stuff, they didn't, they didn't like Jesus. They didn't believe in Jesus. They didn't believe what he was teaching. They didn't believe he was the Messiah. This ain't the one we reading about in the book. Where is our warrior? You had a warrior. He came. He was meek and humble. But that's not what they wanted. So he said, Rabbi, he going to come at night. So the other religious leaders don't see him. So when he found Jesus, he said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do the miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Yes. Now, as I was reading it last night, I got, I don't know. Nicodemus was sneaky. See, Jesus knew what he was there for. See, Nicodemus was too smart for his own good. He really came there to try to figure out what Jesus mean by this born again. What is this born again yes. thing? Yes. What do you mean we can't inherit the kingdom of God? We're telling the people they're going to heaven. That's what they're teaching. That they don't need this Jesus. So he want to know what Jesus mean about that. He didn't really believe in Jesus. He tried to speak spiritual. You know how we do. No, you ain't saved. You try to quote a few uh, uh, scriptures like you know something. Yes, Jesus. We know that thou art teacher is sent from God. No man can do the miracles you do. Except God be with him. He didn't even believe his own words. Glory to God. But he was too smart for his own good. He was beating around the bush when he really was there to find out what was going on about salvation. So right away, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot. Do you hear me, Nicodemus? You will not see the kingdom of God. And that blew Nicodemus' mind. Because that's what he was there for. And Jesus knew it. Because he could not understand what Jesus was saying. Because it didn't seem logical to him. He didn't want to believe it. He's been teaching a different teacher all these years. Now here comes something new. He thought he was on his way to heaven. Jesus knew he was smart. Too smart for his own good. So he told him. Nicodemus, marvel or not. Stop wondering, Nicodemus. Stop trying to figure it out with your carnal mind. Just receive it. Just receive salvation. Yet he wanted to know more. Because it wasn't adding up. It didn't make sense. 
How can these things be? And Jesus said to him, aren't you a teacher? A master of the Jews and you don't know these things? That which is born of flesh is flesh, Nicodemus. But that which is born of spirit is spirit. He said, I tell you earthly things and you don't believe. So why do you want me to tell you about the heavenly things? Because you ain't going to believe it. You don't believe what I tell you. St. John 14 and 6 says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus was letting them know that he is the only way. And you don't know the way unless I show you the way. And you don't know the truth unless I tell you the truth. And you can't have eternal life unless I give you life. I don't care how many scriptures you try to find to support your theory. Or how many churches you try to find that's going to tell you what you want to hear. Jesus said you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. But the scriptures are testifying of me. Can't you see that? It doesn't matter how you look at it. How you try to decipher it. It all points back to me. I am the only way. I am the only truth. I am the only life. The giver of all life. The same way that we desire truth from our spouses, our girlfriend, our boyfriends, our children. Yes. Lord have mercy, yes, we right. desire truth. Yes, yes, Pastor. Now, son of mine, don't you tell me a lie. Mm. Glory to God. And sometimes you don't even know the lies from the truth. They tell the lie so much. Sometimes you be saying, Lord have mercy, should I believe it? This time. But you'd rather not say nothing and just wait yes. and find out. Mm-hmm, it was a lie. It almost had me, devil. <laughs> Tell you, it's hard to see a lie when it's wrapped in truth. Yes, yes, it's yes. true, Pastor. That's why we got to stay prayed up. Mm -hmm. Ask God for the spirit of discernment. Yep. The minute you open their mouth, ooh, that's a lie. That's a lie. I see the lie coming out your mouth. God will give you the spirit of discernment. Amen. But uh, the same way we desire truth from our children, from our spouse, from our friends, God desires the same truth from us. We have to make it a habit to tell the truth. Amen. Do y'all believe that? Yes. Yes. Listen, yes. we got to make it a habit to tell the truth. Yes. You know how many times you be tempted to tell a lie? I'm going to get y'all right here on them taxes. A lot of people are tempted to tell lies on their taxes. A lot of people are tempted to tell lies when it comes to those uh, programs that help y'all mm -hmm. putting this down, writing that down, telling a lie, telling a lie. So we have to make it a habit to tell the truth. Because temptation is always out there. The devil sometimes tries to tempt me to tell a lie. But I turn around and say, devil, you're a lie. I'm going to tell the truth. Whether it hurt me, whether I got the pay, but telling the truth is the right thing. Because if you don't, you'll find yourself telling lies. Trust in the only thing, trust, truth, is the only thing that's going to set you free from your sins, from death, and from hell. It is truth. We must walk in the truth of God's word. David said God desired truth in the inward part. Yes. And in the hidden parts. Somebody say hidden parts. Hidden parts. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Oh, there's another part, y'all. There's another part to this thing that we have to deal with. The place where all our secret lies. The place where we hide things that we don't want people to know about us. Down in the heart. David said, thou shalt teach me to know wisdom when it comes to the hidden part. Why? Because he's talking about our heart. 
Jeremiah said in uh, chapter 17, verse 9, that the heart is deceitful above all and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Nobody but God knows the heart of man. There is so much going on in our hearts that we don't even know it sometimes. Good and bad flows from your heart. One minute we're saying, I love you. The next minute we're cheating and fighting. Have you ever been talking with a person one minute, everything seems fine. The next minute they won't answer your phone calls, they won't answer your texts. You don't know what happened. Yesterday we was talking, it was fine. The day they done shut you down, cast you out. It's that old heart, y'all. It's that heart bringing up that past again. Old memories. Glory to God. Something that was done over 20 years ago. She done apologize. But the heart don't want to let it go, y'all. Our heart is wishy-washy. Messy and sloppy. You got to watch that heart. God is concerned about our heart. He warns us many times about the condition of our heart. If we have iniquity in our heart, he won't hear you, he said. If you don't forgive somebody, he won't hear you. You hear me? Forgive him. I don't care how much it hurts you. The Lord had me forgive somebody one time. The Lord had mercy. I didn't want to do it. He told me to call Pastor Graham. God don't let me cry. But I didn't want to do it. Because you know what? I had got so caught up. Anywhere I like being mad at this person. They deserved it for what they done. And it wasn't even to me. But this person was like a sister to me. And that thing hurted me when I found out. How could you? And I was mad. Do y'all hear me? I was mad. And the Lord told me to forget it. And I wouldn't do it. But I know that I'm a prayer. I'm an intercessor. So when I got down to pray, I would ask God to forgive me, God. Please forgive me. Because you know I need to intercede. I need to pray for the sick. I need you to hear me. Please forgive me. So I would repent. Then I would get up. And as the day go on, the enemy bring those thoughts to my mind. And I grab them again. In bondage again. After I just repented. And the Lord said, I got to forgive. He said, call Pastor Graham. And I said, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to call Pastor Graham. And let me tell y'all one thing. I heard this sound like the trump of God. Honey, I fell on my knees and I repented. I repented because I thought Jesus was coming. The Bible said he's coming as an archangel with the voice of God. Like a trumpet. And I thought I heard the trumpet. Oh God, oh God. Oh God. And I felt in my knees and I repented. And while I was on my knees, Pastor Graham called me. She called there looking for Junebug because he used to live with me at that time. And when I answered the phone, I said, oh my God, Pastor. Oh God, I told her I was just repenting. I thought I heard the trump of God. And she said, well, what in the world is you doing that you got to repent? And I just went to crying. I told her what happened. She already knew. But I said, Pastor, I, she said, you got to forgive. I said, I don't want to forgive. That's the thing, Pastor. I don't want to forgive. I don't want to forgive. I like cutting this person off when she tried to talk to me. I, I like giving her, dismissing her. I liked it. Do you hear me? But I knew it was wrong. But when it was time to pray, then here I am, repenting. Because I knew God wouldn't hear me with that in my heart. Unforgiveness. Iniquity. I knew that. So pastor began to pray like she always did. And I said to myself, let her pray because I'm not letting go. But she began to pray. And she began to tear down walls. Tear down the enemy's walls that was in my heart. Do y'all hear me? She began to pray and pray. And after a while, after a while, my spirit began to pray. I began to cry. Ooh, God. 
And I began to pray. Yes, Pastor. She tore down that stony heart. She tore down that wall of iniquity. Yes, she knew it. I was in the clutches of the hands of the enemy. Talking like that. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with you, mm -hmm. Sister Janice? That's all right. Saying that I didn't want to forget. Yes, yes. When you know the Lord said we got to forget. Yes. If your brother sin against you seven times, right. seven in one day, right. yes. forgive him. Yes. Which is 490 something times, ain't it? You know, Pastor, yes. That's how many times he said, forgive them in one day yes, yes. if they sin against you. Yes. Ah. You know what that means? Yes. God wants our hearts clean. Yes. He wants you to forgive. Yes. Because if not, you'll be like I was. Help us in the enemy's clutches. Yes. Didn't want to get out you know. until it was time for prayer. Yes. Because I know I love praying for the sick. Yes. Yes. Praying for the unsaved. And she says, Sister Janice, you got to forgive. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. She knew how I was. Yeah. The Lord revealed it to her. Yeah. And she yeah. said, and do it quickly. Yeah. When I hung up the phone, I said, oh, I ain't going to do it. I'll do it later. Yeah. I turned on the TV. There was a preacher on talking about forgiveness. <laughs> ain't that something? God is merciful. Do y'all hear me? Yes, he is. He's merciful. Oh, God, I when I heard that preach, I turned the channel. The second preacher was, I don't know who the first one was, but I remember the second one was Joyce Myers. And she was talking about forgiveness. Again. And I said, Lord, I hear you. I hear you this time. So I went and I called that person. But first I had to get in my flesh. Before I let anything go. I want to get in my flesh. Let her know. Let her know. Okay. I'm about to let it go. But I wanted to let her know. First of all, I'm calling to apologize. But I just wanted you to know that I hated you. I hated you. But I said, I forgive you. I forgive you for what you've done. Here I am. Here I am about to be lost because it wasn't even none of my business but it was somebody close to me but that person was like a sister to me and I couldn't believe she did that and I didn't want to forgive so I had to tell her yeah I just want you to know I hated you for what you've done and then I said but you know what when I said I forgive you I just started crying and she said it's okay I forgive you which made me even madder. Because you know <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, where's her uh, uh, forgiveness? Where's her repentance, you God? Know. Jesus. She don't want to hear her. You know that. Jesus. But she said, it's okay, I forgive you. you know, I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. God, I did what God said that's do. Right, and it made me feel better. Yeah. Do y'all hear me? I felt better after I hung up. At first, I was a little mad, like, oh, the nerve, the nerve. But you know what? I was glad that I did what God said to me. Because I know when I went down for prayer that night, that God would hear me. I didn't have to repent and beg him to forgive me. God, please listen to me. Listen to me, God, please. I'm telling you, I used to beg. I knew the word. He said, for them that know to do right and do it is not in the sin. I know I was sinning. I know I was sitting. I didn't want to let it go. But I knew that day that the Lord would hear me. And let me tell you, I got down there with confidence. Yeah. Woo, I was on the right track then. Do you hear me? I was back on the street called straight. Glory to God. Woo, I was in right standing with God. And I thank him for his mercy. You see how merciful he was to me? I was so hard-headed. Told me to call the pastor, I wouldn't do it. Had to make me hear a trump that thought it was the trump of God and then pass the call. Then here she go trying to pray, I'm still got the wall. Yeah. But prayer. But prayer. God, I thank you. We love you, Pastor. Prayer changes things. Hallelujah. 
And it tore down that old stone and haunted mine. Then, then, still was rebellious. I ain't gonna say it now. I'll call her later. Turn on that TV, guys. You gonna do it now. Forgiveness. Oh, I hurried up and turned it. Forgiveness. Oh, Lord. Now, come on. You ain't gotta knock my head off, God. I know I'm disobedient, but I ain't crazy. I ain't crazy. When the Lord said it them two times, that was it. Because then, you know what? I, I could have been in trouble being disobedient. Because he said, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I could have been in deeper trouble this time. So I said, all right, Lord, I hear you. And I thank God. I thank God for his mercy, for his grace, y'all. Do y'all hear me? God is so merciful unto us. When we deserve judgment, he gives us mercy. We know we done did wrong. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, but he'll get you out of it this time. And some of us won't even learn. We'll go back and do the same thing or something different. Mm -hmm. And then you get caught. Mm -hmm. God. No, I got you out the first time. Mm -hmm. But God is good. God is, good. God is so good. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm going to read back over this a little bit right here. It says, God is concerned about our heart. He warns us many times about the condition of our hearts. If you have iniquity in your heart, he won't hear you. Ooh, God. Your heart is a critical part of your walk with him. That's why he tells us in Proverbs to guard your heart. For out of it flows the issues of life. Your heart affects everything you do in life. Jeremiah said above all things. That heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Yes, it is. Isn't that something? Yes. Stuff in there we don't even know in there. Yes. Glory to God. Don't even know the person. You just don't like them because of the way they look. <laughs> oh, she thinks she all that. that. That's all right. You go and you love her. Get that old spirit off you. Yes, yes. Let her think that she all that. But let her know there's somebody better than that. There's Jesus. Give her Jesus. Right. Give her love. That's right. Glory to God. Do you know what above all means? When Jeremiah says above all, that heart is desperately wicked. It means to indicate that the thing you're talking about is of most importance. Above all, more so than anything else. Your heart, not your mouth, not your actions or your ways, but your heart. Above all that other stuff is desperately wicked yes. and deceitful. Yes. The hidden part. See, it's not what you see that you have to worry about. Yes. It's what you don't see. That's the problem. So God is letting us know. Yes. Keep your eye or keep both eyes That's right. on your heart. Mm -hmm. Keep both your eyes on your heart. Matthew 26, 41. Jesus told the disciples, you have to watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. This thing you're housed in, this thing that we can be imprisoned in if we let it, the house in our own house. We could be housed in our own house. Amen. Locked up in our own minds. We become a, a prisoner to our own selves. And we need help. The enemy has taken control and doesn't care. And now you don't even care. That's where I was. Locked up in my own mind. Knowing to do what was right but didn't want to do it. If you see something you want, you just steal it. No remorse. If someone makes you mad, you just kill them. Roll rage. With no remorse. If you're jealous of what somebody else had and you know you could never afford it, just destroy it. Go buy a key that car. Put them expensive cars. You know. Go and buy their key in somebody's car just because you're jealous Jesus. with no remorse. Glory be to God. 
And those three main purposes are of the devil. Stealing, killing, and destroying. Destroying property that's not yours. Shame on y'all. Shame on us. And if we don't deal wisely with our hearts, we will find ourselves doing the enemy's dirty work. Do y'all hear me? We'll find ourselves doing his job. And I'm going to end with a text that I got from Sister Teresa yesterday. It went well with my um, service here. I couldn't believe it. It went well. And the title is Haifu. Haifu. Then I tell y'all, the Bible says that a man say in his heart, there is no God, then you a fool. Here she comes sending me this text said, Hi, fool. This is the devil talking to you. Okay? He said, I saw you yesterday. You begin your chores. You awoke without kneeling to pray. And as a matter of fact, you didn't even bless your food. Or pray before you went to bed last night. So you're unthankful. I like that about you. I cannot tell you how glad I am that you decided to go another day without giving your life to Christ. I am so glad you have not changed your ways of living. For you are mine. Remember, you and I have been going steady for years. But I don't love you. Yet as a matter of fact, I hate you. I hate you because I hate God. I'm only using you to get even with God. He kicked me out of heaven. And I'm going to use you as long as possible to pay God back. See, fool, God loves you. And he has great plans for you. But you have yielded your life to me. And I'm going to make your life a living hell. That way you, we can be together twice. Glory to God. This really hurts God, you know. Thanks to you, I'm really showing him who's boss in your life. With all the good times we have, watching movies. We're not supposed to watch. Cursing folks out. Partying. Stealing. Drinking. Smoking. I took some of that out. You can tell. Glory to God. Telling not so nice jokes. Gossiping. And stabbing people in the back. Surely you don't want to give all that up. Let's burn together forever. I got some hot plans for us. This is just a letter of appreciation from me to you. I like to say thank you for letting me use you for most of your life. You know, I laugh at you. When, you, when you're tempted to sin and you give in. You even make me sick. Sin is beginning to take its toll on your life. You look 20 years older. I need some new blood. So go ahead and teach some little kids how to sin. All you have to do is cheat, gossip, cuss, miss Sunday school, and weekly services. Stay home and watch TV. Do all of that in the presence of the children. And they'll do it too. Kids are like that, you know. Well, fool, I got to go now. I'll be back in a few seconds to tempt you again. If you're smart, you'll run to confess your sins to God. And what little bit of life you have left. It's not my nature to warn you. But at your age, and you're still sinning, still sinning it's become a bit ridiculous. Don't get me wrong, I still hate you. If you really love me, you won't share this letter. Look how he signed it. Nasty fella. Faithfully, hatefully yours. Satan. Isn't that something? That was something. That was revelation. That was revelation that somebody wrote. And that's how the enemy uses us. When we allow him. When we give him space. The Bible says give no space to the enemy. 
When we open the door a little bit, when we crack that window a little bit and let the enemy in, honey, he don't take an inch. He gonna take a mile. He gonna take a mile. He gonna take your life, like Sister Millie said, or try. Because the Bible already told you, he came to steal, kill, and to destroy you. You! He's here for you. And we are to give him no space. That dirty fella. So now I have those who didn't know the tricks of the enemy, now you know. Now you know. He just told you. He was using you. When you did all those things that's not of God, when you have attitudes, all, all those things, that's him. He's using you. He's using us. But we can't allow him to use us like that any longer. He's under our feet, the Bible says. God said he's given us power over all the power of the enemy. So how do he get the power back then? How did he use me? Because I gave it to him. I gave him space to use me. He can't take power away from me unless I give it to him. God's word is truth. If he says the enemy can't take it from you, then he can't. You got to give it to him. And that's what we do sometimes. We give in to the enemy. Too quick sometimes. We give in. But God desires truth. And then what God. And that's my message for today. Glory to God. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Did we enjoy that word today? Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, it's tight, but it's right. It's tight, but it's right. Amen. It's tight, but it's right. Hallelujah. We thank God for that word from our pastor. I'm just wondering if somebody, that somebody uh, that's here this afternoon hears something that touched them in their spirit and said, uh, you know, some of that stuff she was talking about, that was me. Or that, that, that was me or that's me right now. And somebody's saying, you know what? I'm not, from this day forward, I'm not going to allow the enemy to use me as a tool in his hands ever again. From this day forward, we're going to take a stand and say, devil, not today, not tomorrow, or the day after, because I'm a child of the Most High. Come on, can we confess I'm a child of the Most High? Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord. I'm excited. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Anybody here? The pulpit's open. The, 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 the altar's open. Anybody here? Anybody here? Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. I'd rather be, be get it right today and be saved than walk out of here and be lost. Somebody here says, I want to give my heart to Jesus. Somebody saying that the sins that I have in my life that I'm allowing to separate between me and my God. I don't want that to be no more. Hallelujah. Come on, there's time. There's time. There's time. I'm going to hold on. There's time. Hallelujah. Just let the Lord speak to your heart. Hallelujah. Let him speak to your heart. Hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And it's here to break every chain. Hallelujah. You know what? When Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, and Jesus told him, he said, Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again. Nicodemus said, Master, Rabbi, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter his mother's womb a second time and be born? No. He said, that which is flesh is flesh, and that which is spirit is spirit. I mean, we have to be born naturally once. This little baby was born naturally once. This little baby has to be born again, but he has to be born again spiritually. So marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. So I'm wondering if somebody says, I need Jesus Christ in my life. I'm, I'm, tired, I'm tired of walking, of walking and going nowhere fast. 
going nowhere fast. Hallelujah. Come on. I know there's somebody here. I know when I was in the world living for the devil, I remember clearly I was on my way to New Britain. Actually, Waterbury. I'm sorry. I was on my way to Waterbury to do something I shouldn't have been doing. And as I was sitting there in the seat, I looked in the, in, I was in the front right hand passenger side, I looked in the mirror. And I looked in the mirror and I said to myself, there's got to be something better than this. And my friend said, what's wrong with you? You're awful quiet today. What's wrong with you? They noticed I wasn't talkative, I wasn't socializing. I said, you know what guys, this has to be something better than this. And I'm letting you know today, there's something better than this. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He's here to break every chain. He's here to destroy every yoke. He's there to lift every heavy burden. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Tomorrow is not promised. I guarantee you tomorrow is not promised. Just as sure as we leave out this door and not to scare you, but we can leave out this door and get hit by a truck. Somebody come behind us and shoot us. Whatever it is. I heard about a lady who was in a house cooking dinner. Just cooking dinner for her family. And a bullet came through the window and killed her. Just cooking dinner. We don't know when death is coming. But I want to let you know today. That if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, death could come whenever it wants to. Because you know when you're getting up out of here, you know where you're going. Come on now. Do you know where you're going today? Hallelujah. 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 I'm not going to hold you. I'm not going to bend your arm. here to accept Jesus? Anybody up here accepting Jesus? Anyone here want to give their life to Christ? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hold on. Come on. Form a line. Form a line. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anything special you want for her? Her birthday? Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You don't want me to touch it. Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for this child. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That power in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for this baby. I thank you for it right now. Hallelujah. I thank you for this child. We are part of your heart right now. Father, your Holy Spirit. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let this child be different than any other child, Father. Use this child to spread your word. In the name of Jesus. And God, I pray for the mother right now. God, I pray you would give her a hunger, God. Give her a desire and a thirst, God, to know you more, God. Give her a hunger and thirst, Father, that, that she would want to serve you, God. Every hindrance that's in her path, Father, we say right now that it, it be removed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father, I pray you would fill her right now, God. Touch her right now, right, 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 right now, God. Touch, 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 touch. God, let her feel your power right now, Father. Let her feel your anointing right now, God. Don't let her be the same right now. But continue to change her from the inside out, God. From the inside out, Father, change it. Right now, God. Change right now, change right now. Change, 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 change. Change right now, Father. Oh, God. Show yourself strong right now, God. Show yourself strong to her, Father. In the name of Jesus. Sunday.
In the name of Jesus. Oh God. Yes, Lord. I thank you for changing her, Father. I thank you for changing her, Father. I thank you for changing her even now, Father. I thank you for the gift you imparted within her, Father. That gift, Father, that she's going to use for your glory. Father, I, I, right now I speak against fear. I speak right now any fear that would come right now. Father, I pray that she would have an ear to hear you, God. To hear you when you speak, Father. That she would have that boldness, God. Not to hold back. Not to hold back. Not to hold back. But say, the dust says the Lord. The say, dust says the Lord. You have to do it. You have to do it. You have to do it. Do it. Do it. You have to do it. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. Use her, God, in her job. Use her in her friends, Father. Use her, Father. Make it a light in the midst of a dark place. In Jesus' name. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, Father. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. God, I thank you for everybody. Oh, I thank you for her restoration. I thank you for her restoration. Oh, God, I thank you for... Oh, God, I thank you for just being God to her once again. God, she doesn't understand something. She has a lot of questions for me. She has a lot of questions for me. But God, you speak to her, Father. Answer the questions that she has, Father. Not understanding sometimes why things happen. But I pray, God, that every hurt from past experiences, God, Every thought of loneliness. Comfort her, Father. Comfort her in her time of loneliness. Yes, Father. We break the chains of the enemy right now. We break the chains of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus destroy every yoke. The blood of Jesus will break every chain. We plead the blood right now. Every heavy burden lifted. Every chain destroyed. Every question answered. My God, we thank you. Give her the strength. Give her the wisdom. Give her the power to do your will, Father. To walk in your way, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Minister right now. Holy Spirit, minister. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. 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 I break down, I break down every stony heart, every wall that built up. I tear it down in the name of Jesus. I break down every wall in the name of Jesus. That you shall be free. Free, 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 free. No more chains holding you right now. 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 Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Satan, I come against you right now. You try to bring spirit of fear to this young child right now. I come against that spirit of fear. I come against them bad dreams. I speak that his dreams shall be full of goodness. His dreams shall be full of God. His dreams shall be full of uh, uh, just, just joy. He shall not fear. He shall not fear. He shall not fear. From this day forward, he shall not fear. He shall not fear. God, I pray right now, prayer protection over this young man. The divine protection right now. The divine protection over Kazma. I pray, fill him with your word. Fill him with your word, God. Use him for your glory. In the name of Thank you for his father. Use his father, Father. Use his father, God. Make him that husband. Make him that dad. Teach him the son his way. In the name of Jesus. Teach him, Father, he may teach others. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for him, God. I thank you for Jerome, Father. Thank you for his heart, Father. Thank you, God. I thank you for his love towards your father. In the name of Jesus. Continue to impart unto him the word, Father. Draw him close to you from this day forward. Every day draw him closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to you, Father. With his hunger and thirst be for you alone, God. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Father. Will there be any more? What about me, Lord? Yes, yes, yes. Will it be any more? Yes. Will it be any more? Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Thank you, Lord. Miss Dottie? Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Miss Dottie? The enemy trying to attack her body. Every time we turn around, something happened to her this time. We come against that spirit of infirmity right now. We speak health and healing to this body right now. We come against that spirit of depression, that spirit of loneliness, when she's all alone, Father, that, that spirit of sadness. We come against that right now. God, we speak your spirit, your spirit of joy, your joy in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Miss Dottie. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Heal, Miss Dottie. Wipe away these tears, Rasaka. Wipe these tears away, Rasanda. I will pour a little sugar and fill it with your joy, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Rose, son, God, I'm going to call sister. Yes, yes. Sister Nikki, come here, sister yes, Nikki. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, oh, Father. Yes, Trina, where's Trina? You. Trina? That's your friend, right, Trina? Yes, yes. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Trina loves Nikki, and I believe Nikki loves her. Both you guys got to hook up in the spirit. You got to hook up. You got to hook up. I don't know if your relationship is like it used to be. If there's just a lot of space and time, kind of, you guys kind of drifted apart. I, I don't know, but but I'm hearing that you need to you need to support. You need support. You guys got to be each other's support. Trina, you need to you need to hook up with Nikki. She Nikki's a private person. She's private. She goes through stuff and she, she just suffers in silence. There's things that goes on in her life. She doesn't share it with anybody. She doesn't share it with anybody. But God knows. God knows. We don't need to know your business. But God knows, he said. He said, though you sow in tears, you shall
shall reap in joy. From your sow and tears. You shall reap in joy. You sow and tears, you shall reap in joy. From this day forward. From this day forward. You shall reap in joy. You shall reap, you shall reap, you shall reap in joy. Give it all of it, all of it. Don't hold it. You can't carry it. You can't carry it. You can't carry it. You can't carry it. I don't care how much you think you can handle it. You can't handle it. You can't handle it. He said, the battle belongs to me. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. I will repay, says the Lord. The battle is not yours. Seek me. He said, seek me early and you shall find me. Search me and you shall find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Healing, healing, healing. Emotional healing. Right now, right now. Verbal, verbal, verbal. I hear like verbal abuse. I speak healing against verbal abuse. Verbal abuse. I speak healing against verbal abuse. Emotional abuse. Right now, in the name of Jesus. You are a child of the Most High God. How dare he speak to you like in the name of like that in the name of Jesus? I tell you, the Spirit of God is moving. Spirit of God is moving. Don't miss it. 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 Rasanda Rabuko. Hallelujah. After, after church, I don't want nobody coming up to me and saying, can you pray for me? When the Spirit of God is moving, you need to move now. You need to move now when the Spirit of God is moving. You need to move now. Brother Chris, I love you, man. You hear me? I love you, man. I really do. When I see you coming to the church, man, I, I don't know, I just feel great, man. Because God has plans so much plans for you. I heard you thought I was Puerto Rican. I'm Italian. I'm Italian and American and Irish. German. Yeah, well, I don't want to talk about that German part. That's when you start getting involved with Hitler. That's not me. But I love you. I love you. I thank God for you. And more than me loving you, she loves you. I know she loves you. And her heart's desire. Is for you to be by her side. Not that you're not by her side, but in a different way. Yes. In a spiritual way. Yes. You support one another. With a, with, 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 where she she holds you up spiritually. And spiritually you hold her up. To be together in holy matrimony before God and men. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not pushing you to get married. But I'm telling you what. God, he said, he said that, that the marriage bed is uh, honorable and all. So I don't know if you have any plans in the future. But I know she loves you. And she wants you to be joined together as one. Spiritually. Just raise your hand. I'm going to pray for unity. In the name of Jesus. A prayer of unity. God, from my hand, God, to his hand. From his hand to her hand. We bind hands together in the name of Jesus. God, I pray right now, Father, that you would bind them together in oneness in you. That his desire for you would be the same as her desire for you. Give my hunger and thirst for you, oh God. Make them one in you, my God. Make them one in you, Father. In the name of Jesus. 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 God, I pray. Give her her heart's desire. Give her her heart's desire. Give her her heart's desire. Give her, 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 her,
to hell about. Give her her heart's desire. Give her her heart's desire. Oh, God. Thank you for these young people. Thank you for these young people. Thank you for these young people, Father. Thank you for them right now, God. God, I pray for a prayer of protection over their life, God. God, I pray you would guard their minds, God, of everything that the enemy would try to come and infect it with, Father. Every kind of distraction, I pray, Father, that you put a veil over their mind, Father, that it would not affect them, Father, but their desire would only be towards you, oh God. Oh, God, the desire for you and you alone, God. <coughs> Help them this year, God, in school, Father. Give them the wisdom they need, God, to pass all their classes. Give them the desire, God, for their education. Keep them safe in the schools, Father. From all hurt, harm, and danger, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Father. God, I thank you for his coming. I thank you for his love towards you, Father. I pray you continue to increase, increase, increase the desire for more and more of you every day. Fill him with your word. Use his voice, God, in this day for his generation, Father. Let him stand up, Father, for right and for righteousness. God, don't let him be a follower, but make him a leader. Leading them, God, from the errors their way, Father, that he would be the guide of the blind that he would lead them towards you, Father. Use him, Father, to be a lamp, to be a light to this generation. Mm. I thank you for him, Father. Continue to open doors for him, Father. Open doors for him, Father. Bring him and put him in places that he never thank thought he would Lord ever be. Jesus, in Jesus' name. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We may stand on the feet. We're going home. Oh, there's power in the name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.